Do you want to go see your baby sister? Yes. You want to go see your baby sister? Yes. <laughs> You'd rather do that than go play? Yes. All right. It's mother. She's here. She's here. Hello, everybody. So, this is our birth story. I mean, I think like the title is Our. I always say Our because I, mean, I don't think I could have gotten through it the way that I did without you. I mean, the whole process, I mean, like, obviously, physically, it's possible for you to do it without me, but I feel like my job is a lot of emotional support and, you know, doing, getting things for you and being there for you and. Well, physical support too. Yeah. You know, so I can, like, show squeeze you. the shit out of your hands. Yeah, that was pretty much a lot of what I was doing, <clears> with <throat> getting my hand is squeezed like crazy the whole time. I currently have a cold. I feel like shit right now, which is like, yay, two it's and, the best and a half, thing. Two it's and the and best half week thing, old yeah. baby in a cold. I think the only way to begin is at the beginning. You started early, late. Yeah. Though. For those of you that haven't watched our birth story with Isabel, um, I had early labor uh, for three days. Yeah, so I had early labor for two days with Mia and my birth plan was the same for me as it was with Isabel, no epidural, um, natural. So pretty much what was happening is I was having really intense contractions, very painful, and then there would be times, right? And it kind of seemed like it was as it would get later in the night, they would pick up. Which is so ironic and fucked up because it's like, it's like almost like your body was like, you're not going to sleep. So funny but to what me. was difficult about it was that, you know, they would pick up an in intensity, we would start um, timing them, and we just did what you're told to, what we're told to do, you know, which is what you should do all the time. You know, you should always, like, if you just feel like I need to go into the emergency room, it might be time, go. It doesn't matter. Like, so, first yeah. night we go in, I was one, centim one centimeter dilated. It to be five to six. Mm. In a lot of pain, but they kind of, like started to level off a little bit. I think we were there at like three in the morning. We called Isabel's nanny and we yeah. were like, we think it might be time. So she came over to stay with her at the house and then- We were there the for hospital. like three, two or three hours, I think. We didn't get home until like five in the morning or six in the morning. Yeah, so we didn't really sleep then. Yeah. The second- it Happened again. Well, it was worse. So I started getting like more and more contractions throughout the day. What happened with Isabel was the third night that I had early labor. I went into the hospital and they offered me a Demerol shot, um, intramuscular. And they said, usually you'll be able to just pass out for at least a couple hours, you take a nap, and then generally when you wake up, your body's going into real labor, like actual labor. Yeah. So that was kind of our game plan this time. I was like, okay, we'll just go in second night. It was like eight, 8.30. I requested the Demerol shot. Yeah. So they gave that to oh, me like in my hip. The thing is, is that we kind of like planned it that way almost because we knew that you were going to continue to have these early labor things and we wanted you to get some sleep. So we were like, all right, we're going to wait till around 8.30 well, or the midwife, whatever and come in and That's what the midwife on, on, on duty there. Yeah. She did. told you, recommended it. And yeah. so that's what we did. And oh, that's another big thing I haven't said either is that like both times I gave birth with a midwife. Kind of toyed with the idea of doing an at-home birth this time. I know, Cody was like completely against it. No way. Which it's both of our child, so we both have to be on the same page about that. I wasn't like completely sure about it, because I still like, it, it scares me. Like, what if something goes wrong? Like, we're close to the hospital, but like, I don't have enough time. So I was like, you know what, it's the, I, to me, I felt feel like the best of both worlds is to deliver with a midwife at the hospital. So in case like some extreme medical emergency happens, you're already there in the hospital. Yeah. Um, but I just really, really prefer midwives because they take a physiological approach, whereas doctors take a pathological approach. So really the differentiation between those, if you don't already know, is that doctors can tend to treat pregnancy like it's a medical emergency, mm -hmm. whereas midwives being treating it like a physiological process is your body was built for this, Which this is it natural. Was. Well, it is. Mm -hmm. It's natural and obviously like not everybody has the opportunity to use a midwife. I mean, if you're high risk, they don't recommend midwives, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. I was low risk, so I was able to comfortably be with a midwife. But back to the whole the Demerol thing. So like, cause the first night that we went in for early labor, the midwife offered the Demerol shot, and I was like, mm, I don't want to. Well, she, you know what she would? That she gave us. She said you can either take if you don't want the Demerol shot right now, you can either do Tylenol PM, 
or Benadryl. And we tried the uh, we Tylenol, Tylenol PM. PM. Still didn't really get sleep, but at least it took the edge off a little bit for you. But right? the second night was worse. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to get the Demerol shot. What was really weird is we go in, get the Demerol shot, and it was like, it was like a half an hour to an hour to, to kick in. Mm -hmm. By the time we left the emergency room, we were driving home, I just felt really drugged and it did absolutely nothing for my pain this time. It was horrible, wow. absolutely horrible. Like, we it's just, not that I don't recommend the Demerol shot, it's just, just that didn't work for it you didn't work time. for me this time. And we just spent the whole night laying laboring. in bed. You were laboring, squeezing my hand, and neither of us got like a wink, really. It was so. completely horrible. I slept with a heating pad. Well, I didn't even sleep, but I laid in, yeah, we laid in bed. We got, we laid in bed at like 10. Yeah, we stayed in bed until like seven in the morning and- Seven was... or 7.30 until Isabel came into our room. I was in the fetal position all night with the heating pad on, which the heating pad did help a little bit. Um, it was my idea. That was your idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a really good idea. But I was like sweating because I had the heating pad cranked up to max capacity, like to the highest level. And I was just like sweat beads were dropping off from the pain and then yeah. from the heating pad. And I was just like squeezing the shit out of your hand all night. I think there was a couple times we tried to time them. And before we made it to an hour, it would start to kind of like... Yeah, it would... The time would get further apart. So we're like, oh, F, fuck it, whatever, okay. Let's, we'll just, we'll try to go to sleep. And then like in between each contraction, you would like doze off. And then I never fell asleep. Yeah. And then I would just had your hand the whole time. And I would like almost get to where I was sleeping and then you used to like... God, I'm like, oh, oh, shit. It made me feel like so much better to have you there. Cause I remember there was like a couple times you had to get up to go pee and I would have a contraction and I wouldn't have like your hand to squeeze onto or like you weren't there like stroking my arm or my leg and it was like a lot worse. I think it's that like maybe you're transferring some of your pain to me. So pain you're transference? Like, pain transference, I think that's the thing. yeah. You're just like, you take some pain and but you know that you're giving some too. So it makes it feel a little bit better. Well, it's because it's focusing. I'm like focusing the pain somewhere else. Yeah. Like I'm, you're squeezing your hand and then, you know, the I, sense. It's definitely psychological. It's not the same if you're like squeezing like on, a, you know, some. Like no, because I've done that. I've like squeezed on the hospital bed before. Yeah. It just doesn't even do shit. It mm -hmm. doesn't do anything. I also want to say, I know that we're making this sound really horrible and potentially terrifying. <laughs> it's not. It's not terrifying. I promise. It's just the thing is, is that I'm going to be like completely transparent with the research that I've done and also speaking with medical professionals like a handful of midwives. When you get an epidural, it increases your chances by over 40% of having to get a c-section and the reason why it does that is because an epidural slows your labor down. Like it slows everybody's labor down. You don't know to the degree at which it will slow your labor down, but it does. When it slows it down, you won't dilate as fast. Then they want to give you Pitocin and then the to Pitocin help speed it up. And then makes the uterus squeeze the baby too much. Just so the Pitocin creates much more intense, unnatural contractions. Yeah. It can kind of start to make the epidural wear off too. And then you got to get more of the epidural and then they have to give you more Pitocin. It's just like they just keep layering intervention on top of intervention on top of intervention. And then like what you were saying is that a lot of times the Pitocin makes, can make the baby crash and then they have to do an emergency C-section. I feel like it's kind of like a snowball effect. Like once you take that step towards intervention, then the inter there just has to be more and more interventions and to the point where you get an unnatural birth. And I'm just freaked out by having things in my spine anyways. Like I've never wanted anything in my spine. You don't want anything in your spine? <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't like the statistics. They're not that great. I'm like, okay, there's solid evidence here. Um, I don't want to get a C-section. I know I understand there's obviously extenuating circumstances where some people just have to get it. And that's just the way that it goes, you know, but I just wanted to do everything I could to, to try to prevent that. I do have a pretty high pain tolerance. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty proud of that. So what the midwives told me was, if you want to achieve your birth plan, you're gonna to have to keep laboring at home until mm -hmm. you're dilated enough for us to admit you. It was really fucked up because we thought that like, at least I did, that because Hope had already given birth once, that her body would kind of know what to do more, it would be easier, and early labor is pretty rare for the second pregnancy, or like multiple pregnancies, and it still happened to her. But it was, it was odd though, like how extremely just... similar this birth was to Isabel. oh my gosh even down to the like the time of day because mm -hmm. i just think that's the way my body labors i think that's the way that i physiologically 
labor. I just, I think my body's very sensitive. It always has been. I've had like freakish medical things happen throughout my life and which all in all like that isn't scary. Yeah. You know, like, like it wasn't a medical emergency, but I'm just like, go figure. Like this is how it's going to be for me. So whatever. So I just fucking toughed it out. What else are you going to do? I wake up around like 7.30 mm -hmm. and then I just start like walking around and things start to get worse, more intense, more intense. And I'm like having to hold on to the kitchen island I'm on for about like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, oh, I think it's time. I think it's time. You like, see what I... was weird though, is you started timing and there was a few of them that were like a little bit off, but I, the one midwife that we talked to, she said, try to focus more on the intensity of the contractions. Yeah, the quality of contractions the quality. more than the spanning out and like, I, I, I recognized it in you because when I, I remember seeing whenever you were lay, like ready with Isabel, like you couldn't walk through them. Like, was the the day you were before. like stopping and you had to bear down on things. And I'm like, well, that's what she was doing when she was actually ready. And when I got in the shower, because I was just like, I felt disgusting because I'd been like sweating my ass off all night with the yeah. heating pad and in pain. And that's another thing they talk about too, is like if you get in a hot bath or a hot shower and it doesn't make them stop or go away, then there's a good chance that you're in real labor. And I got in the shower and I had a few more contractions, but they weren't as intense. I was still having them. And then I was just like, you know what? Like, even if I'm not dilated enough, we have to go in to make sure everything's okay. Cause it's yeah. just like the best thing to do. So I was like, F it. We're going in. I have a hard time going into the emergency room. You, she, she feels like she's going to inconvenience people. I'm like, baby, that's what they're there for. I'm like, they're there for that. So you know how many people are going to the hospital? They're like, oh, my elbow hurts, you know? It's just like, you're going in or there. Or the sniffles. Yeah, oh, I don't feel good. And it's like, you gotta, you, like, you have a, you're giving birth. You're about to have a baby. It's like, nobody's going to think you're, like, stupid for coming in here. But and, the time. Yeah, we, we it was left the same time in the morning. The same time as Isabel's birth in the morning. It was like eight or th eight or nine in the morning. And like, we go to the emergency room for the third time in the morning. I'm having like intense contractions. My advice for them, um, cause I have gotten a lot of questions from you guys as far as like advice for how to achieve a natural birth. My method that I do is kind of just ride, ride the waves of the contraction. So every time a contraction comes on, I just like surrender to it mm -hmm. and breathe. You know, it's kind of like, oh, you know, no screaming, don't yell, because that will make the pain worse. You just kind of let it out, like with a loud moan. You don't um, try to get away from it. Yeah, don't try to get away from it. And as soon as it's over, then it, you just relax and you focus on like your family. You're like, you got, you put the TV on for Isabel because mm -hmm. we brought Isabel with us to the hospital. Like it is weird how like you can be in that much pain and then like it's over and then you're just kind of like you know. Yeah, it's, it's wild. And then a few minutes come and you're like, oh. Through it, but they were getting like real bad. Um, some of them, like I was, I was like, fuck, 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 you know, like that. The midwives finally came in and they checked me and I was five centimeters. Mm -hmm. And I cried again. Yeah. Yeah, happy. Yeah. Well, first they were like, what's wrong? That's good news. And yeah. I was like, I know, I'm it's just, so happy. It's always, it was emotional both times with Isabel and with Mia that like when you were finally there, and you were ready to go like you were just like you started crying and it made me really happy too to see you have that like relief of like it's starting it's like it's time yeah it's finally time for us to meet our and you baby. can get pain medication i can <laughs> get some pain medication what i did this time around was i used the nitrous oxide and then i did use fentanyl they gave me i think four doses of fentanyl total a, a dose of fentanyl uh every hour yeah on the hour um, up, up until a certain point. So once you're about eight to nine centimeters dilated, they won't give you any more because this is bad for the baby. Like it'll get into her bloodstream too much. And this, it said like the baby's going to be too sleepy. And so I, I knew that that was the game plan, you know, going into it. The first dose of fentanyl. Yeah. And, and that like helped you out a lot. Woo, that shit's amazing. And like it was really nice. When you got, when we got admitted, I was able to call your Auntie sister, Erica. Yeah, Erica, and she, she wanted to be there, and she had to be there because Isabel wanted to be there, but we needed somebody to watch Isabel, and I'm glad because Isabel was, like, completely just, like, not, like, in the, like, process of it. She was just enjoying watching movies and eating pizza. We had a lot of conversations with Isabel, um, and we were on the fence about it for a long time. Like, do we bring her? Do we not bring her? Um, the hospital we go, we went to allows um, kids to come. 
And I mean, she just like broke down and cried one time when we talked about how we might not bring her, we probably weren't gonna bring no. her. And she was like, but we're a family. We're supposed to be together and I wanna see my sister. And yeah. we're like, well, there's gonna be blood and mommy's gonna be in a lot of pain. And oh my God, we have to talk about that too. Like how amazing Isabel was though, before we left to go to the hospital, because every time I'd have a contraction, you would come over and let me squeeze your hand or like rub on my arm and Isabel would be right there like yeah. on my other arm like it's okay mama it's gonna be okay mama she's a good little kid man. it's gonna make me cry now. she's like, very empathetic yeah. she's a huge empath huge yeah. empath so, but the, it was odd though because when we were there at the hospital and it was like happening like you know you're getting labor they're giving you pain medication you're going through your contractions and stuff Isabel was just like because you put on movies for her yeah well they she, had like nice big screen tvs in the rooms and they had like disney and yeah. like a bunch of really good movies which i'm glad so she just wanted to go to the cafeteria and get treats we she, called auntie erica and she came yeah so erica was helping a lot with my labor too so it was like really incredible this is where it starts to get like really like beautiful and amazing because i got so lucky because i got two midwives and they were incredible midwives who have mm. been doing it for a long time. One of them was just new to the hospital. And I think the other one, they had like worked together somewhere else before. And so she was like helping her get familiarized with the hospital, but not being a midwife. So I had these two like super experienced midwives. Yeah. You were there. Sister My sister was, was there. there. And your daughter was Isabel there. Isabel was there. It was just like amazing. One thing that I did differently with this pregnancy that me and you talked about that I was like, make sure you get me moving, make sure you get me moving yeah. because I did more research and um, the, when the midwives there told me too, like, if you, you know, move around as much as you can, walk around as much as you can. So I want to show them the clips that Erica recorded because it was like, oh yeah, yeah. I was like really happy that Erica recorded these while we were, but I would like every 30 minutes to an hour we'd like do laps in the hallways yeah we do like a few laps around the the area we were in mm -hmm. and or you'd get on the ball or whatever a lot of like whenever you were sitting down or laying down we use some of these like pressure point techniques or if you would like start going through a contraction i would um press on the like the inside of your calf to where like Wait, should i bring my leg up so i guess can... so there's the, there's a nerve bundle yeah up here where the calf is and it was like if if i was to do it to her when she wasn't having a contraction it would just hurt a lot but yeah you were kind of afraid to like do it super hard and when i was in actual labor i was like do it harder i'm like harder, you sure squeeze. i had like bruises and yeah. my calves were like or my shins were sore after i gave birth yeah. but and i would just keep doing that that pressure point it every helped time. a lot because it, it's it's again pain diversion like you're if you're having an extreme pain, but you then you it wasn't sense. painful when you were doing the pressure point techniques. It wasn't painful to me while I was in labor. It was well, yeah. like it, it was relieving. It's like a pain, but it's a lesser pain. But it helps you take your mind off of that one. But we got that idea from these doula cards that I bought on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, they were like amazing. I recommend them to, to anybody, um, and they were helpful to you because like we went through them before I went into labor and kind of picked out like the ones that I thought I would like and stuff like that. And it was the move, the moving around and then the pressure points were like a huge help this time around. Mm -hmm. What was really cool is that like every time that I would get up to walk around, like for the first few times, Erica started timing. She, well, she would time my contractions when I was sitting in the bed and then time them when we were walking around. And my contractions were happening fast, like faster and more and more while, more I, was, while I was walking around. So it was helping me dilate more. That's the whole point of it mm -hmm. because the baby's head... It's putting it, pressure on the, the cervix, cervix and, and it opens more when they're more, in every contraction, more. yeah. Yeah. Now it started to get kind of hairy um, around eight to nine centimeters mm -hmm. because I knew that the fentanyl was going to start wearing off soon. And so I asked them for another dose, knowing that they were probably going to say no. And they're like, no. Yeah, they came in and they're like, no. They're like, the baby's going to be too sleepy. And I was like, oh, I know, I know. She's like, my concern is if we give it the another dose to you, you're just gonna stay where you're at longer. Mm -hmm. um, but you can, you'll progress a lot faster if you just hold off. And the, I just thought the midwives were really amazing because they just said exactly what I needed to hear. And she was like, you know, we really 
want you to be able to achieve your birth plan with no epidural and so this is obviously it's not a good choice for your baby it's not a good choice for you and I was like all right all right okay okay and then um I did that for about I labored with just nitrous oxide um for another 45 minutes to an hour and it was I could only sit in the bed then yeah. I couldn't walk around it was just too much too much too intense and so I was just like sucking on the nitrous oxide and you were like digging into my shins and she came in and checked me and I was like nine centimeters by that time mm. and she was like okay I can break your water for you right now and the baby's gonna come real fast mm. and I was like how fast how fast is baby gonna come because I'm just like if it's another hour like that's not super fast to me and she was like I'm not even gonna leave the room I'm gonna scrub up right in here and I'm not even gonna leave the room. And I was like, okay, let's do it. So she broke my water. Which is the same exact thing that had to happen with Isabel. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was like really quick. It I went, right I went to 10 centimeters. Like, yeah, you, you I just got opened your water up broken. All the way. She was like, then they started setting up to catch the baby and you started pushing like right then. Yeah, yeah. and I only had to push for like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, but it was, it was very, very fast. For me, it was a more um, um, emotional because I think it was just it was Erica was there. Um, there we had Isabel two. Was there. Isabel was there. We had two midwives that were both cheering you on and talking about how amazing you were doing, and I I felt like this. The nurse that I had was amazing too. She yeah. was an amazing nurse. So it's like when I was in uh, and I laid on my back just with like one of my legs straight and I was holding one of my legs up and then like the nurse is on the right side you're on the left side and then the two midwives are like right down at the foot of the bed like I got really em emotional because watching like I'm like I was very proud of you because I knew that you were like so exhausted and you were like told me that you couldn't you didn't want to do it anymore you felt like you couldn't do it it's the same thing I did with Isabel yeah, I just got you, to that place where I was just like you felt like you were like I can't do this how am I gonna done. do this how am I gonna push her out how am I gonna push her out of yeah, me yeah and but you kept digging in and digging in and like you yeah. well they were giving me like good cue like you know feedback on like how to push and mm -hmm. when I first started pushing I just was like there's no way I'm gonna be able to push her out of me how am I gonna Mommy? be able to yes baby hey. I want you the kitty cat cupcake though Chub McGub came to join us so I was just like didn't believe how it was gonna happen but then they were just like I had to push as hard as I could and then they were like take a deep breath and push again and take a deep breath and push again. So I had to do like two or three like the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life was mm -hmm. I everything. I used everything. I didn't even know I, I didn't have anything left and I don't even know where it came from. And that was what made me get so emotional was to see her go like to her limit and then push beyond that and like it just made me very very proud of her. Well, you cried. I did. I cried. And then, but Were you made, not going to tell him that you cried? It made Isabel, she had to leave the room. She got too scared. Just well, she asked to leave, which we knew like could potentially happen. Is another reason why Erica was there. So Auntie Erica just like took her. and She gave me a blueberry waffle and I had a... Uh... That day was all about the treats. Did you have fun when you came to the hospital with us? Like tell, tell everybody how you felt about coming to the hospital to watch your sister be born. Mm, scared? Scared. But are you glad that you came? Uh, a little. A little? <laughs> well, how well did you feel when you got to meet her? Cute. She thought yeah. she was cute. You thought she was cute? How do you feel about your sister now? Cute. Do you cute. love her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like once I got to that point where I felt like her head in this like, I don't know, kind of gave way and I was like, okay, I can do this. And then I just like yeah. started pushing a lot and then she was there. And then Miss Mia was born. Mia Papilla. Mia Papilla. She was uh, put on her chest and she did skin to skin for like over an hour and then cleaned her up, got her dressed and checked her out and then we well, stayed at the hospital for a couple days. Yeah. yeah she was, was eight it. pounds, one ounce. 21 inches long. She was harder to push out and she, she was, was bigger than bigger, you. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger than you were. I, ha I have some big girls. Yeah. Uh, we have some big girls. Well, we love you guys, and I'm pretty sure Mia is going to be, she's going to need to eat soon. She needs to eat. I'll have to go up. boober. It's getting to be boob o'clock in yeah. this house. I don't feel good because I got a cold. I need to go relax, and... We got to eat something. We got to eat. It's time for dinner, and we love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed watching our video. My favorite color is red. Yeah, yeah. Bye. 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 Oh, I'm so, oh my God, I'm sorry. No, just wait. Bye. Bye. Bye.